Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. And I say that in a particular way, if this happens to be your very first time to be tuning into the broadcast here. Thank you so much. We do two things here. One is we study the Word of God. We do that with a purpose of us knowing the Word and becoming appliers of the Word of God, but we do that so that our lives become more effective in telling the lost about Jesus Christ and His salvation that He worked for us when He died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. So our two focuses are simply this. We teach the Word of God to sharpen our lives, and then we want to be able to tell the gospel to people who do not know Christ as Savior yet. That's our goal today. We'd love to have you stay with us and join us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to Titus, Titus in chapter 2. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 11. If you can, reach over and get your own copy of God's Word open there and join us. Titus, please, in chapter 2. I also have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is simply a tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's a tool by which we can give to people who do not know Christ that they can read this gospel tract, learn how Christ has done the work to save them, learn how to receive Christ as Savior. And friend, that is one of the heartbeats of Christ that we see people saved that ought to be one of the heartbeats of people who have received Christ as their Savior. I want to talk more about this tract here in just a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study this way. There is no Christian song more widely known than the song Amazing Grace. You know that, and I know that. Bible preaching churches love it, but that's only the beginning. I've heard Amazing Grace sung or played by some of the most secular groups on earth. The story behind the song Amazing Grace is also amazing. The truth of God's grace to sinners took hold of a wicked man's soul. He became a follower of Christ. Grace transformed his life. He became the author of the words here of the song Amazing Grace. But friend, that's just the beginning. Our verses here that we're going to see in Titus 2 says that grace not only works at the time of salvation, uh, grace continues to work in the lives of believers all through their earthly walk. Our verse is going to say that grace teaches us, but it does even more than that. It's a great day to be here with us. Get your Bible and join us, Titus chapter 2. Get something on which you can jot some notes and also jot down our contact information. The reason I want you to be able to jot down our contact information is I want to give to you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. One of those tracks is this one, Thank You, Your Service Was. Now, friend, this track was written and designed to be used when you're in a situation, whether it's a restaurant or some other kind of situation where somebody has served you and you want to give them a tip. Well, giving them a tip is great, but let's use the opportunity to give them the gospel, something with eternal value. On this track, you'll be able to grade their service. The top grade on it is this, the greatest service in the world. You know what? You never, you never check that one, and here's why. Because the track goes on to say, for you to give me the greatest service in the world, not only would you have to serve me, you'd also have to pay my bill. Now, I joke with some waitresses and waiters about paying my bill. To date, none have. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to serve us. 
He came to not to be served, but to serve, but he also gave to give his life a ransom. He'd give his life as a payment price that we could be saved. He did both. Here's a great tool. Be ready when my announcer comes back on at the end of our study time. He'll give you three ways to contact us and use one of those to give us your name and mailing address. We'll send that sample packet to you free of charge. You can just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, Titus, please, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11, the Bible says this, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all, to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll stop right there. I've been using a set of words all beginning with the letter R, like on the word robot, to form the outline here, my outline for verses uh, 11 to 14. And so far, I have used these three words. I used the word reason based upon the very first word of verse 11. I use the word revelation based upon the rest of verse 11, that God's grace has appeared, and that is in the person of Jesus Christ. My R word for verse 12 was the word rigor. God's grace rigorously is at work in the lives of believers, helping us to say no to some uh, sinful actions and say yes to those actions that are described here as being sober, righteous, and godly. Now, those three words are not complicated. They simply mean this. The word sober means sober-mindedness. That means having our thinking founded on God's truth, not on the world's ideas. The word righteous means that we do and practice life patterns based upon what is right, based upon what God says is right, not what the world says. And the word godly is a word that refers to living out the characteristics and the qualities of God as we see them portrayed in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, as I say, these words are pretty basic and pretty simple Uh, They're words that you and I ought to be seeing how grace impacts our lives with them. But do you see the end of verse 12? God's grace teaches us these kinds of life patterns to believers while we are going through our daily life now. (laughs) This present world, this present age is a vile, vulgar, and vicious place and vicious era. It is a me first type of era. Uh, Believers, though, are learning not to live that way. We used to live that way, but now we're living lives where we put Jesus first, we put others second and ourselves last, we learn how to live out, well, we learn how to live out Romans 12, 2, which says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's grace at work. We are learning to live out what Paul said in Galatians 2, 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I, but Christ lives in me. We're living out the Christ life, a grace transformed life. All right, let me give you word uh, number four. My R word number four is my word refocused. Refocused based upon verse 13. Let me read thir- verse 13 again. It says this, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of uh, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, did you notice the word looking there or looking for at the beginning of the verse? That is the same word that's used over in the events surrounding the birth story, the story of the birth of Christ. You remember as Christ was just a baby, he was taken to the temple and there was this old man, Simeon, there. The story is found in Luke 2. We're told that Simeon was, look at now, waiting for the consolation of Israel. For these were looking for a Messiah. The word waiting there in Luke 2 is uh, translates a very identical Greek word translated looking here in our verse. But there's another one. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15? In Luke 15, too, there were some Pharisees there that were complaining and upset at Jesus because he, listen now, received sinners. 
Jesus took note of sinners. He had dealings with sinners. He ate with sinners. When our verse says that believers are looking for the blessed hope, it means that we are being transformed by grace so that we take an interest in the coming of Christ. We interact with others about the coming of Christ. We do our daily lives with this blessed hope in our view, not in our rear view, but in our front view. I am one of those who believes that when this verse, verse 13, talks about the blessed hope, it, that is referring to the rapture of the church age saints. Oh, friend, before we were born again, our life focus was like everybody else's. We were lost in sin. We were focused on earthly things and earthly money and earthly success. We worked hard to get ahead, to be comfortable, to be contented, we thought, and to be, well, we, to be considered important and successful. Now, though, because of being born again, grace worked in our life rigorously to save us, and grace is working in our life to transform us here. With grace in our work in, in our life now, grace is refocusing not only our daily life pattern, but also where our hearts are looking, where our hopes are looking. To be true, yes, we are involved in having earthly lives to live. We've got mortgages to pay. We've got colleges, to, tuitions to plan for. And, of course, we've got to make plans to take care of ourselves in our old age. All of this we do, like lost people do, but with a whole different life and heart motive. Jesus is coming for us. When? I don't know. Neither do you. Nobody does. But at his coming, it'll be a glorious event. Our mortal bodies will be clothed with immortality. Our service for Christ will be rewarded both on what we have done for him, but also on the heart motive in doing the things that we do. Jesus judges our words, our actions, and our heart motives. Oh, one more thing. Did you notice how Jesus is described here in verse 13? Jesus is our Savior and our great God. He is Jesus by name. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. You remember? He is the Christ by his office. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. But he's our Savior. He's our Savior due to his death, burial, and resurrection, but he becomes our Savior when you and I, by faith, receive him as our Savior. But then he's our God. He is that by his eternal nature and being. Jesus did not become God sometime after he was created. Jesus here is the God-man. The eternal God took on flesh. Oh, his earthly body had a moment of birth, but the eternal God is eternal, not created. He always was and always will be, and that's our Savior. Friend, that's the caliber of Savior you're going to need to get rid of the sin stain on your heart. That caliber of Savior, the eternal God loves you. He loves you. He knows every last thing you've done. He knows every last thought you've thought. He knows every last motive of your heart. And he knows it, but he loves you. And he came to die on the cross to pay your sin debt that you through him can have your sin stain removed and be given the gift of eternal life. And God will help you live it by his grace. Receive him now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.